Welcome to the Cloud Pod, where the forecast is always cloudy. We talk weekly about all things AWS, GCP, and Azure. We are your hosts, Justin, Jonathan, Ryan, and Peter. This is uh, episode 77B uh, called the, we took a break over the 4th of July week and we have to catch up here. And so we're doing a bonus episode for you on the Google Prediction Show. Uh, and we still have Matt here, uh, which you don't know that because you haven't heard 78 where <laughs> Matt actually plays with us. Uh, but uh, <laughs> Matt is here representing Peter as Peter had the time zone issue, which you'll learn all about in 78 in the future. I'm coming to you from the past or the future or all over the place. I don't know. So anyways, we're back here again to do our Google Cloud Next predictions as Thomas Curry is taking the stage on Tuesday, July 14th to give us all of the fantastic cloud news that's going to be driving their nine week Google Cloud Next digital conference. Uh, I can't wait. Nine weeks of content. I'll be Google clouded out uh, after all this. So, anyways, welcome back, Ryan, Jonathan, and Matt. Hey, everybody. Hi, hey, guys. Well, in a very scientific pre uh, draft party, we rolled the dice, and uh, I picked the first spot in the Google Cloud Next prediction show, uh, followed by Jonathan, uh, Matt, and then Ryan. Uh, now, the for those of you who are new to the show uh, and never heard our prediction show before, we use the Upgrade FM format that I shamelessly stole from them, and thank you to them, uh, as they had a great idea how to do this. And so basically, each of us will pick three round. Uh, it's basically three rounds of draft picks, and we will pick uh, items that we think Google will announce on stage. It has to be either on a slide or mentioned audibly by Thomas Curry and during the keynote. Uh, it cannot be done before, cannot be done after. It has to be during the keynote. And so that is a key, a key stipulation that Jonathan has been very upset about in the past. So we'll let Jonathan uh, have his way on the rules for this. Uh, Ryan is our typical tiebreaker, but now he's part of the competition. So maybe Matt will be our new tiebreaker. We'll, we'll work that out later, Matt. Uh, there's a small check involved with that uh, for me to win every time if we get our tiebreaker. Perfect. I was just going to go with a glass of whiskey, yeah, but that yeah, works. Whatever. So. You know, I don't know when I'll see you again because social distancing uh, in the age of COVID. But uh, you know, when that happens, I'm down to give you a glass of whiskey. So anyways, as I mentioned, uh, I'm on the draft board first. Any questions before we get started uh, on the Google Cloud prediction? Any comments you want to make about making your Google Cloud predictions? I actually found this uh, to be a bit difficult. <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely. Which I think is a, more of a, a fact that we're kind of in a bubble with all of the COVID stuff. And so it's hard. You know, you're not talking to salespeople. You're not talking to you know, other friends of yours in the industry who might know insights into things that are coming. And, and so I think that makes it a little more difficult. Uh, but I did come up with several, several options uh, in case I needed to. So just be safe. So going last, if you have any extras. Yeah, uh, I, yeah I could throw them to you after I get through my, my third round. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, yeah. we do have, Peter did provide his predictions to us. We know what those are. We're going to, you know, if we, we get, we take his prediction beforehand, that's just on him because he can't do time zones. But uh, Matt, you'll be on <laughs> Best of luck to you <laughs> on these <laughs> predictions that you're completely unprepared for. So I, I this is going to be fun. That's fine. I got three, so the last round might be rough if anybody else steals one of them. So the uh, the first one I have is I expect they're going to announce a Cloud SQL or Firebase or BigQuery solution for Anthos. Uh, I believe that will be something that will allow you to run Cloud SQL or Firebase in a different cloud. Uh, and that will be their big Anthos announcement, as that is one of the missing features of Anthos right now is you cannot run uh Data, manage databases at this point. So that is my, my first pick. That's a good one. Well, I think uh, my first one is new or improved collaboration and productivity tools because they're eating their own dog food with Google uh, Meet or whatever it is, and uh, they probably realize how bad it is and they need to fix it. New collaboration tools because Google Meet sucks. Yes. Uh, would you like us to include uh, a major enhancements to existing Google Meet and not a new product, or do you feel it's going to be a completely separate tool from Google Meets? I think new or improved collaboration and productivity tools covers it. <laughs> uh, yeah, you think? <laughs> <laughs> How broad can I make it? Uh, I also had that on my list uh, as a honorable mention if I needed it. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> as I kind of expected the same thing. Uh, that takes us to Matt for your first pick. You're on the board. All right. Uh, GCP will launch a new region somewhere in the Midwest. Somewhere in the Midwest. Ooh, you, think, you think they'll go Ohio and to be in Amazon's backyard? Or you think they'll go somewhere completely new? Yeah, then, then we have to argue if Ohio's in the Midwest because people in Ohio don't necessarily think that. Yeah, that's a little weird, uh, weird location. Like, they don't think they're in the... Like, I sort of see it. I mean, it's it definitely leaned more to the east, but it's more central, too. So, I don't know. I'm not from Ohio. They're in the Midwest. 
Yeah, that's my take too. But your wife is not, and so I don't want to anger her. Yeah, she doesn't. She doesn't listen to the podcast. We'll be okay. Well, I mean, she's our podcast lawyer, so I'd like to keep her on her good sides. That's true. <laughs> All right, Ryan, that puts you on the board for your first pick. Well, following Jonathan's lead, I think Google will uh, announce a thing on stage during one of the weeks that they're doing the on-air conference. Mm, that's I'm, I'm gonna, <laughs> as the rule as a former rule maker. <laughs> And, and police are, I'm going to call shenanigans on that. Uh, so again, it has to be inside the Thomas Curry and keynote on Tuesday, the 14th. That's the only right. day it would matter. So if they announce it three days later on a different keynote, that yeah, doesn't, it doesn't count. I know. I know. So, yes. And I'm sure they will announce a thing. <laughs> yes. Uh, no. Uh, so really, uh, I, what I think they will do is during the keynote, they will really tout their big query data in response to the COVID-19 outbreak and how that was used by lots of Lots of different agencies to demonstrate uh, how the COVID-19 moved through our country and the world. Excellent. I think that's a great. That was one of the, that was one of the ones I thought of with the missing of Peter and only have three. So, uh, Well, so, you know, I spent some quality time for my second one uh, and I actually went on Reddit and I, I crowdsourced this, my second choice. Uh, so I went and asked in the Google Cloud Reddit uh, what people were hopefully looking forward to. And uh, user Casper underscore man gave me more granularity in Stackdriver reporting analytics around status reports, uh, which he thinks is coming because of the new unified Stackdriver interface with uh, Google Cloud, and that he says Azure and AWS have similar capabilities. And since I, I did go ask and I said I credit him, I, I'll take that one as my second. Nice. These are tricks that you guys can use next time. I, I did not ask anyone, but I definitely did research. I almost got there. Just needed more time. Hang on, while well, I just pull up Justin's post in Reddit, and I'm going to find the second, <laughs> the second answer. Well, I, I didn't put it up early enough that I got enough responses, so uh, you know, that's how it works. <laughs> someone, someone, someone jokingly said... I was actually on Google, Reddit. Which is kind of their, their new thing that they, Google's been gotten really popular for, is increasing prices for SLAs. But uh, I, didn't, I didn't go for that one. So. I was going to make that joke, too. My, mm-hmm. That was my second joke. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, there you go. I see it. I don't know if anyone else has commented since I, I looked at it earlier. So there might be something new there I don't know about. So. No, Jonathan. no, there's not. So my my prediction is that there will be a token price cut for Anthos, by which I mean not substantial enough to be wow, but you know after the backlash of um, starting to charge for the control plane for um, the container infrastructure. So if they cut it by 50%, you don't get that point? Well, that's, I don't, that's a no. substantial cut, I would say. That's what I'm saying. He's saying it's token. I, I think it's a token cut. Yeah. Well, so what if they said it's still ten thousand dollars a month, but we won't require the minimum twelve months? That would that would yeah. That's Is still that a cons- token to you. No, that's that's significant. So we'll just say token. So small. I'll put this in a small cut to pacify the haters. <laughs> yes, like us. It wouldn't actually. So I don't know why they, they need to. I think fifty percent reduction or reducing the twelve month commitment is the way to go for that. But that's just my take. Yeah, probably. I'm just being, right. you know. All right, Matt, you're on the board for your second draft pick. An announcement of a partnership with a pro sports league. A pro sports league because they have a lot of money right now because they're all shut down. That's, mm. and I question Peter's thought process on that one because yeah, they're they signed... wishful thinking for sports to come back. As well, yeah, I maybe. I, I mean, I definitely they they signed NBA right. They already have NBA. I think MLB is with AWS, and then NFL is with Azure. So soccer, <laughs> I don't know what the next one. Are. XFL already shut down again because COVID killed their chances. Yeah. I have the scoop on this one. It's actually air hockey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's a that's an excellent pick, I guess. Peter slash Matt. <laughs> I don't want to be lumped in with Peter. It's, it's all Peter. It's all Peter. Uh, Ryan. Uh, that puts you on the board for your second pick. So, in prices rights fashion, I think that Google will announce a large or significant reduction of price for Anthos. <laughs> <laughs> A significant price reduction. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. I dropped a lot. Price reduction. Perhaps dropping Anthos. it by more than 40% or re- reducing or removing the 12 month. Drop it by more than 40%. <laughs> or removing the commitment. But the guy came from Oracle. They don't, they don't do cheap. They're partnering with a huge bank. It's not because they don't like money. Yeah, I really wish I knew Anthos adoption numbers to really feel solid about that prediction because I really think that 
that if there's if there's any adoption, they're not dropping that price. All right, I for my third pick and final pick, uh, I'm going. You know, again, I, I spent quality time with the Google product sheet, and you know, I, one of the things that Google has been doing a lot of is security. Uh, you know, DLP is one of their big areas. They've invested a lot in. They have WAF. They've got they've got all the the basic checkboxes done. But you know what? No cloud provider really has in the security space, and I felt that Google might be the one to step up and do this. Uh, and it, it kind of got tipped off based on a blog post they posted You're around DLP. You're going to steal my prediction. I can hear it now. I'm going to go that Google is going to release a Google Cloud endpoint security tool of some sort. Either antivirus, endpoint DLP, uh, you know, host-based intrusion detection, those type of tools. It's going to be an endpoint security product from Google Cloud directly. That's not quite my prediction. So I think I'm okay. Nice. So that just means that Jonathan or Peter Matt will steal it. Yeah, that's possible. I, I wouldn't steal that exact same thing, but I do have a variation on that for an honorable mention. So we'll see. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> I think uh, my final pick is that uh, Thomas Kirum will talk about the importance of uh, sort of community governance over some of these tools, and they will be moving Knative to a foundation. Well, that's a good one. So, I mean... You already put that on the board. You've locked that in. They did announce a new uh, thing today that didn't make the main show for 78, or uh, but it will be in 79. The Open Usage Commons, uh, which they are now pushing Istio into. Mm. Uh, I don't. I didn't see K Native in this announcement, but I. This is their play, I think. To they're not, starting a new foundation. They're basically starting a new a new thing. Oh, Google. <laughs> and Come so, on, man, we will uh, we'll talk about it uh, next yeah. week on the main show, but. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know on this one because only because this announcement came out today and it didn't make today it didn't make the show cut off for this week's news, so we didn't talk about it today. But I did see it this morning as I was putting notes together for next week's show. I mean, I think it's very likely he's going to talk about it on stage. So. It's very possible he'll talk about it. It's just not going to be to CNCF. That's all. Yeah. So, but it, it, you know, and, and then your question is going to be, do we feel that the open usage commons is community governance? So that'll be where we'll get into that next week uh, on the show. By, by which you mean, by next week, you actually mean how many weeks from now, because now we're in the past, in the future, in episode seven. I, I, I don't know where we're at right now at what this point. What is X-Men? We're, we're, in the, we're in the past, but there's a future episode, so it'll be the episode after that. We'll talk about that. So that's how that There you go. See. 79. 79. Just go with the number. 79, we'll like talk about this, there. and we will, we will have thoughts. So there you go. Do I have to, like, save my mom and somehow this, this episode 79 to make sure I'm born? <laughs> Yeah, we can make sure. Uh, and so now we are on number three for Matt. An announcement of a commitment beyond 2023 to cloud infrastructure. Ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> we promise not to kill Google Cloud. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what Peter's going with. I wonder if they would do that. Like, if that be like some financial commitment or some penalty like i mean like it's words otherwise like if there's no teeth behind it i mean i guess it's not the first time google would say something about teeth in it so i, yeah. I mean it's probably fine but yeah I, I when i saw this on his list i was like oh yeah he, he's that's a good one but <laughs> but, um, but only 2023 that's only two and a half years <laughs> well because no, that was the thing was that they basically said they weren't number one or number two by 2023 they would kill the google cloud so anything saying you know hey we're we're committed to this business we're not going to kill it so following along with your pick, which is Google, you know, done great things in security and doing things that no other cloud provider has been able to do, I think that they're going to allow Layer 7 uh, network inspection and route. Well, they probably... if, if Peter was here, he would have picked that, I feel like, because he always I picks know. it for every one of these. He picks so. it for every one, so, <laughs> yeah. and he didn't, so yeah. I'm stealing it. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Egress filtering. All right, yeah, that's a good one. I do like that. All right. Do you guys have any honorable mentions, or am I the only one with honorable mentions? I just got the one. All right. What do you got, Jonathan? So, you know, you mentioned endpoint security protection. I think they'll do endpoint security protection, but it will run in the hypervisor layer, not in the VM. So it will be an agentless endpoint security solution. All right. Jonathan? Mm. I mean, if they announce that, I'm getting that point anyway, so that's fine. Because <laughs> I count that. <laughs> I would totally count that. <laughs> At least that's how I see it. But, you know, maybe I'd go to Matt for the tiebreaker on that. We'll see. All right, I had a couple because uh, I spent quite a bit of time this morning because I was worried that you guys would all come in here with amazing ideas and take all of mine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I was I was grossly wrong on this, but uh, that's okay. So the first one I said, uh, I figured they'll have a cohesive single solution for AI ML control similar to SageMaker. So a tool similar to SageMaker. Eh, I, yeah, I thought about this one too. I just, I, it's 
they don't have anything that has any precedent to that. Like they just don't seem to have that same sort of. Well, they're very web forward, so like they don't have a client like SageMaker has. So I, I mean, I definitely think it it would be a web app, but I think it's a single unified dashboard of some sort for that purpose, to basically be a competitor to SageMaker. Because I think that's, you know, of, of everything, I think that's a good leapfrog that Amazon did on them for that tooling to kind of give it all to centralized place. So I could see something similar uh, on their side. Uh, I also assume that in the security vein that threat hunting tools, they might come out with some threat hunting stuff uh, for on top of their, their system. I thought that might be interesting, especially if they're doing endpoint. Threat hunting will become a bigger deal. Uh, I also had AI anomaly and predictive capabilities to cloud monitoring in a big way. Uh, now that they've you know, named Stackdriver cloud monitoring, I felt like you know this is the time to really bring their machine learning AI chops to it. That's kind of my thought. Do they not have that? Already? They have some, but not not at the level that I would that would cross my bar for this. Okay. Like a no, they don't have anomaly detection or they have or... some anomaly detection, but they, it's not widespread. It's not across everything. It's not a core principle of cloud monitoring yet, and so that's where I think it it kind of becomes it's capable of everything. I mean, it's in certain stuff like EC2 and a couple other things. Uh, again, on the endpoint side, uh, they don't really have a chef or puppet or anything for configuration management. So I thought maybe that'd be something they would come out with. That's a good one. I ended up spending a lot of time going down the rabbit hole on cloud build to figure out what it would, could actually do because I kept coming up with things that I think they thought they needed, but they've done it. But they just no yeah. one uses it. Is that is that something likely for them to do, given that they're all in on Kubernetes? Yes. I mean, uh, I, like, I I feel like they... I mean, this, this is the thing we learned last year at Google Next, and I think you learned this lesson when we did the predictions, is that you know at the end of the day, a lot of their more higher value services like Amazon's doing, they're just going to dump into Kubernetes. And like, here's, here's a container, run that. That's how you get your higher functioning out of the primitives. Um, I do think that ignoring instances in favor of only Kubernetes, I think, gives them, limits their ability to adopt into enterprises. And so that's why they need to do it. Is it going to be a huge focus and is it going to be the most amazing, you know, like we bought Chef kind of thing? No, I don't think that's at that level. But I, th I think they would provide something there. Because, you know, in Amazon world, you have OpsWorks, you have Elastic, Beanstalk. Um, you've got capabilities to do these things as well as SSM, and I, they just don't really have that. That's what I saw. Yeah, that's fair. When you expand that out to like Anthos and stuff like that, like you know the GKE is you know managed clusters and on, and all that, but managing setting up those clusters, which you don't have to do in GKE, but at Anthos and and everything else you do, right, and still requires configuration management to set up the base underlying Kubernetes clusters. Yeah, but they, they I mean Anthos does that for you. Um, does it do per cluster? It, I think it handles all of the instance setup and other, uh, you know, when you point at Amazon, it sends up EC2 instances on your behalf and manages them for you because that's part okay. of the value prop. Um, well, I knew it, yeah, I knew it did the instances, but if it does all the, the I, I mean, I, I, again, I don't, I don't know because yeah. I don't use it, but because uh, I don't want to pay $10,000 yeah. times 12. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> I, I assume it does. But again, if not, someone can write into us and tell us that I'm completely wrong. Uh, and then my last honorable mention that you guys didn't steal, uh, a major update to Google Docs, Sheets, and Slides. Uh, I feel like Google apps have been kind of stale for the last three or four years, and so I feel like this is the year that it needs a major refresh in some way or some major investment in money and UI, and so I think this is the year it's going to happen, but uh, it may not be. I don't know. Well, isn't that covered by my collaboration and productivity tools? That's what I was just going to say. Well, I guess I was thinking more collaboration when you're your pick, but I guess, yeah, for sure. Uh, but let me add productivity to the list. I didn't write that down. Yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Fine. That is a wide, broad topic you chose there, wasn't it? it? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. it's cloud-based work work tools, I guess. The only other thing I had for an honorable mention was that you know they've made a lot of progress with their constant computers in the past year, so I'd be surprised if they didn't mention mm -hmm. the, um, the, pr the progress they've made. Yeah, it's just it's not very approachable in a main stage topic. That's my it's, only. It's, I, yeah, it's not. But it, it's like it's like talking about the you know the A one hundred instances that you know, come out for GPU and inference, and you're not doing machine learning. It's hard to talk about on stage. So we'll definitely see. Uh, well, I so for a tiebreaker question, I thought uh, that someone would say you know coming to us live, there'll be you know fifty thousand people watching us on the live stream kind of thing, and so this is the Price is Right rules for your tiebreaker if we somehow tie. Uh, if, if any of us get a point, I'll be happy at this point because <laughs> I'm not entirely <laughs> sure. But if, if for some reason we all get a point and we need a tiebreaker or two of us get a point and we need a tiebreaker for that, we have to now choose. How many people do you think will be attending or have signed up for the Google Cloud Next digital event that they will tout on stage? 
we're we talking about uh, individual registrations. Yes. Whether they uh, watch a stream or not. It'll yes. be the number. It'll be the number of registrations Google use, that Google says, right? Which will be the higher number, so it'll be registration. Yeah, it'll be registrations. Okay. And and they and they won't have a real time. They won't have a real time idea of who's watching the stream, as my guess. That they would be willing to ad hoc ad lib on the stage in a in a pre recorded video, most likely. So <laughs> it's going to be virtual attendees registered. Yeah. Okay. Who's going to go first? <laughs> well, I, I, I vote last. I think we uh, should do it in reverse order of the. Son of a. <laughs> 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 Again, price is right rules, so you can go for a dollar. Uh, yeah, it doesn't work as well when you go first. Uh, let's see. <laughs> there had 10,000 people at Google Next in 2019, I believe. And so I think that they are going to get 45,000 uh, registered attendees. Okay. Ryan has 45,000. Matt, you're on your own on this one because Peter didn't help you out in advance. So what do you think yeah. of this one? I'm going to go with, so based on some like other tech conferences I've seen where the numbers have skyrocketed, um, probably like 60,000. Okay. Okay. Jonathan? I am going to go with 85,000. Uh, and I will go 100,000. Yep. Not a dollar. Yeah. <laughs> no, not a dollar. Cause I, I, cause I, I, mean, I, think, I think I saw the numbers from DockerCon. I think it was, wasn't it like 70,000 people registered for DockerCon? Which is a much smaller conference, much much more niche. Uh, Google Cloud, people are interested. It's free. You know, it's virtual. Uh, I could definitely see a lot of Amazon and Azure people checking it out too. So I'm I'm gonna go 100,000. I feel pretty good about that number. So we'll see. Well, good luck to you all of you uh, on the TK keynote on Tuesday. We will uh, see how it's going. I will probably live tweet it uh, as I like to do for some of these keynotes. Although I did not do Larry Ellison's today. That's all right. But. Uh, that's the plan. So we will cover back to you with the results on episode 79. See how we did on the Google Next Draft. Have a good one, you guys. See you. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys. And that is The Week in Cloud. We'd like to thank our sponsor, Foghorn Consulting. Subscribe on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts and tweet us your feedback at hashtag thecloudpod. Or join our Slack channel. Go to our website, thecloudpod.net, for sign-up instructions. Mm-hmm.